Hey fellow designers, have you ever wanted to create a text input field in your prototypes that actually worked in Figma? Well, I'm going to show you just how to do that. It is a little bit tedious to get it done, but after you've created the first one, uh, you can actually create it into a component and then you can reuse that in multiple places. So just bear with me. I'll show you the basic process and then you can go ahead and create one for yourself. So let's get started by uh, just creating a basic text field here. I'm going to keep it pretty simple. I'm not going to put too much design into it. Uh, it is just going to be a label and a box here. Uh, let's make that into a border box. And then we're going to go ahead and have some field text in this. So this will just be our field text. And there is our very, very basic input field. Uh, let's go ahead and put these together and frame the selection. So now that we have one component essentially, and at some point you would want to actually create this into a component so that you could reuse it. So how do we get this to actually work and behave as an actual input field in our prototypes? What we're going to be doing is leveraging variables in Figma. So I'm going to go ahead and click anywhere off the screen and then you'll see this local variables button, click on that, and we can create a variable. Let's create a string variable called field text, and then set it to ideally blank. Unfortunately, uh, Figma doesn't allow you to set a blank value. If I just delete it and hit enter, it resets it to whatever it was previously. Uh, I'm pretty sure I was able to do this before, so I'm not sure at some point they changed the, uh, they updated something in one of the uh, latest versions, and now I can't do that. So. You can still do it through the API. It's kind of a pain in the butt to do that. I think for our purposes, we can just set a space and that's okay because uh, you won't really see it. Um, and for the most part, uh, we can just deal with that situation. And there's a way to kind of set it to an actual blink um, using our conditionals too if it really bothers you. Uh, but for now, let's just leave that as a space. And what we want to do is associate this text here with that variable that we just created. <clears throat> So let's go over here, have our text selected, and I'm going to click on this little apply variable icon. And once I do that, I can see that there's field text. Uh, once I've got that selected, you'll see now um, our text here is just blank and there's nothing there and you can't see it because it's a space. Okay, great. Um, what are we going to do with this variable? Well, we want to be able to capture our keystrokes and then uh, change that variable based on the keystroke that we captured. So how do we do that? Let's click on our frame here for our input. <clears throat> click on prototype, add an interaction, and choose keypad, gamepad, and we're gonna press a key. So this is the key that we're gonna capture. Uh, in this case, we'll just start with the letter A. And when you push the letter A, what do we want it to do? We want to set the variable to uh, the text that already exists there uh, to the text itself plus the letter A. Uh, and we will choose string literal. So it's going to put two quotation marks around it. And that means it's the actual letter A here. And that's our very basic uh, prototype interaction configuration. And if we test this now, uh, go ahead and select this frame. We're going to go ahead and preview this. And I click on here. And as I hit A, you can see that I am typing in this text. Um, obviously, uh, this isn't capturing all the other keystrokes, so I can't actually type anything meaningful here. And I can't really delete uh, either. As I, if I hit backspace, we get nothing. So let's solve those problems. Let's go ahead and add just uh, another letter to show you again what this looks like. I can go ahead and take this uh, right and select it. You kind of click right in front of it. It will be selected like this. Uh, and you hit Command C or Control C if you're on PC. Uh, Control V to paste. And now I've got another one. Click on that, and this, kind, this kind of time I'm going to hit B, and I'm going to go ahead and choose B. So now when I hit the letter B, it's going to add B to it instead of A to it. Let's see what happens here. <clears throat> so now I can type in A, B, A, B, A, B, B, A, A, and you can see that. Of course, delete still doesn't work. Other letters don't work. So we can follow the same process to add in all the other letters and keystrokes that you want to capture. You can capture numbers, you can capture symbols, you can capture um, users holding shift to type in capital letters, um, question mark, punctuation, all that sort of stuff. It takes a lot of time. You can see how this is very tedious because I have to add 
basically 26 different behaviors for each individual keystroke, uh, plus 10 different numbers, plus all the various punctuation marks I might want to add. Uh, it's a lot of work. But once you've got it created once, you can actually copy and paste that uh, and reuse it, create a new component rather, and reuse that in a bunch of other different places. But before we start going down that path of all our different letters um, and enabling them, we want to fix this a problem where users can't delete. So how do we do that? Um, we don't know what letter the user typed. So how do we delete letter? We can't know which de letter to de delete, right? Um, and the way that we get around that is <clears throat> sort of holding on to a history of what was typed into it before we added that letter. And by doing that, we can kind of simulate uh, a delete up to a certain amount of time. And that's good enough for most cases. So I'll show you what I mean by this. Let's go back to our uh, variables here and we're gonna click on variables. We're gonna create a history essentially uh, of variables. I'm gonna call this field text hist one. And I'm gonna set all these to blink. I'm just gonna duplicate this a few times. So for now, I'm just gonna do three. <clears throat> that means the user can delete and hit the backspace key up to three times before it stops working. And that's probably good enough for most cases. You know, you can, you can do four, you can do five. Uh, it's a little bit more work. It's not that much more work to do more. You can support a lot if you really wanted to. Um, but we'll just do three to, for this demo purpose. Uh, <clears throat> and the idea behind this is that before we set our field text, what we're going to do is we're going to make a copy of that here. But before we make a copy of that here, to field history one, we're gonna copy history one to history two. And before we do that, we're gonna copy history two to history three. This will allow us to keep track of the previous states, multiple previous states of the field text. And then when we hit the backspace key, we just kind of undo that action. So let me show you what this looks like. <clears throat> I'm gonna, oops, not prototype. Go ahead, click our field here again, and we're gonna go back into our keystroke. So. Uh, we're going to add a set variable and we're going to make sure that this happens before the before being changed. So I'm going to kind of you have to close this. This is another sort of Figma awkwardness. You have to close this down. You have to click in between this, uh, this little triangle here and this variable icon. If you click on that, you will be able to drag and you can drag that above. So now our field text setting that we set up earlier is down here and our new one's gonna be up here. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna set, um, <clears throat> we're gonna set field history text one to field text. And again, what I'm saying is before we've added that letter A, so when we hit the letter A, before we add the letter A, we're actually going to be saving that state uh, to history one. And now it changes. Now after that, so this is going to run from top to bottom, right? Um, this is going to save it, and then this is going to change. Uh, and now we're going to have to actually have to do this for the other uh, history. So I'm going to go ahead and add a few more. So I'm going to do set variable and another set variable. So we have a couple more. Again, um, close these off so I can drag them above what we're doing because we have to do this in the right order. Okay, so then before we set history one to field text, we want to set, set history two to history one like that. And then before we set history two, we're gonna set uh, history three to history two. Okay, so it's from three takes on two, two takes on one, one takes on the current and the current gets added. And this is what that looks like. All right. Um, <clears throat> And the reason why I said do this now before you do all the other letters is because these three things have to be set for every single keystroke. And you notice that if I go to B, we don't have that. So let's delete this one. And we're gonna select this one again. Uh, and you gotta click right in front. There's like a little blank space here, way in front. If you click on it, you get this weird thing. Close it, click on kind of the very left side and this whole thing will be highlighted blue and now I can copy and paste and paste and paste. So now I can do uh, the letter B. I don't, oops, uh, control Z that. And I don't have to touch these three now. 
um, I can go ahead and only change this. So I'm setting the key uh, capture and what it does. And then I'm going to go here and do capture the letter C. Okay, I keep hitting that little minus button. So we're going to expand it, uh, put the C in there, and then we'll just show one more for this D. And D. Okay. Uh, and now uh, we need to capture that backspace. So let's add an interaction. And when we have a keypad, all right, we're going to press our key, which is backspace. And what are we going to do? We're going to set the variable here. And so for backspace, we have to reverse that operation. So we're going to set uh, field text to field history one. And then we're going to add a few more here. And we will set then one to two. All right, so we're reversing this order and we're going to set two two, three, so set field text at one, one to two, two to three, and we don't need this last one actually. Okay, um, so now that this is set up, when I hit the backspace key, I'm gonna reverse, and if I hit the backspace key again, it's gonna actually go back a little bit more. And now let's test this. Let's test this, oops, not publish. Uh, go ahead and preview, and now I can type in A, B, or C. Uh, and I can type a bunch of these, right? And now if I hit backspace, you can see that I can actually delete. So I can type and delete, type and delete. Um, but you'll notice that if I hit delete any more than this, I can't go back further because uh, we've only saved the history for uh, three letters. So I can only go back three here if I had, uh, you know, created text field history four, text field history five, text field history six. I can actually go on indefinitely as long as I'm willing to put in that work for doing that. I don't think it's really necessary to do that. Um, you know, uh, again, this is just a quick hack to get something that sort of feels like a text input. Most people aren't going to be sitting there deleting. Um, one of the tricks that I do do is if you want to be able to reset the field very uh, easily and quickly, um, what I'm going to do is add a, a keypad and I do a shift backspace. And I'm going to set uh, field text to blank. And I can actually just type in two quotation marks that will set it to the empty string uh, right there. And with that, that gives me a way to just kind of clear everything and restart. So now if I go ahead and preview and I type in a bunch of stuff, if I hit shift delete, that will delete everything. And, you know, I can, this will still work, right? And I'm like, oh, I typed way too much. I need to delete this whole thing and go ahead and do that. So now you have a relatively good working and functional text input field. And you'll have to, of course, go in here, you know, do this for the capital letters, do this for your symbols. Uh, I'll show you just kind of quickly what that looks like for capital letters is if you want a capital D, you just hold shift and hit D and you'll see this little shift icon show up. And then what we do is we make sure that our uh, D here is set to capital D when you do this. So you have to have one for lowercase D, uh, one for capital D. So I'm going to make a copy of this, right? So this is the capital D version. You know, the, the lowercase D version will look like this. And, and so you have a component that just has a ton of these. But again, once you've created it once, you kind of have it and, and you can use it in, in multiple places. Um, if you are trying to have multiple uh, text input fields on the same screen um, and you want both of them to work this is where it gets a little bit trickier you're gonna have to have multiple um, you're gonna have to have multiple variables so you're gonna have to name one uh, so something different with the variable and that also means that your history and all that stuff has to match and that does mean that when you copy and paste this component you do have to go in and sort of fix all the variables in uh, in that prototype interaction set uh, which can again be slightly tedious uh, you could probably have some sort of plugin uh, and write some code that does it i do wish that figma would give us a better way to just type code so that we can do all this uh, in like a text editor and just paste it in here maybe that will be a future uh, future feature figma if you're listening i would love to be able to do that to be able to create much more complex interactions
So um, just one really quick final demo of what this might look like uh, fully completed. And if I go ahead and preview this, you will see that I can type what I want in it. And there you go. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Have a good one.